Hi, Crosswinds. Well, I wanted to take a little bit of time today and update you, uh, just uh, share with you a little bit more about our search for a new lead pastor. Uh, most of you know that back in 2023 in the fall, I uh, shared with our elders that I was feeling God moving me out of my senior pastor role here at Crosswinds and uh, into this role as managing partner at an organization that we've been working with for about eight years around Crosswinds, an organization called Wellspring. Uh, Wellspring does a number of things. I've shared this before, but I'll, I'll just say it again. One of the main things that we do there is care for the souls of pastors uh, from all over California and even into the Pacific Northwest now. And, and so you know, uh, that has been bittersweet for me. I, I love this church so much. There is no place like it. I thought I'd be in my role here for much longer. I, I thought another 10 years or so at least. Uh, and now I'm stepping away because I feel God is calling me to something else that is also very, very important. Anyway, uh, back in October, our elders began a search. Uh, what will we do to replace Chris in his current role? Uh, I, I realized, I was thinking about this, a lot of you uh, probably imagine that what I do throughout my week, most of my week, is spend the time preparing sermons and then teaching them on Sunday. And maybe you think that's what pastors do all week. Uh, I know it's true because uh, I cannot tell you how many times someone stops me in the courtyard, different person each time, uh, on a week I haven't taught and says, so you got the week off, huh? And I politely laugh and I think you have no idea what I do, do you? <laughs> Um, I say this because the task before our elders was not a small one, finding a senior pastor. Uh, it's not just somebody who can teach on Sundays, but it's someone who can give big picture vision to the broader organization. And, and Crosswinds needs someone whose big picture vision will align with that of this church. Uh, and it's someone who can lead the staff. We have over 20 staff here at Crosswinds, lots of people to lead, even indirectly. Uh, we needed someone who we thought could bring out the best in our staff and help us staff into the future. And it's partnership, somebody who's got the ability to connect us in partnership with other people and other organizations, Goodness Village, uh, City Serve of the Tri-Valley, the way we've partnered with our city and our county the last five years, that's significant. Not every pastor you find has an understanding of what it looks like to do those things. Uh, there's a long list of other things, right? Pastoral care, uh, leading our church into peacekeeping initiatives, that's important. And, and I said leading our staff, but it's even making sure that our kids' ministries and our students' ministries and, and our small group ministries are everything that they can be. Oh, and they've got to be really passionate about leading people to Jesus, we want to see someone who loves to share God's grace and forgiveness with people. Lead us all in doing that together as a church. It is a hard task to find this person. Uh, even as I walk you through all that, I think there are parts of those that I've been good at, parts of those I know I could have done much better. But what's hit us is how difficult it is to have one person who can do it all. You know, these days, we expect our senior pastors often to be Superman, to somehow have this superhuman ability to manage everything. So, early in our process, our elders brought up a couple of internal names. Um, Jody Tay, is this something that you would be interested in doing? Uh, Jody has been here 20 years, worked alongside me as our associate pastor for the last 10 years. And Jody said, I love crosswinds. I do not feel like that role is my calling, all of that stuff. And they asked about Andrea. Is this something that Andrea would want to do? And Andrea said, there are parts of that that I love. I love teaching on Sundays. I love championing the vision for what our Sunday morning services look like, lots of creativity, but I do not feel called in any way to be the lead over this organization. And our elders talked about all of that early on. What are we looking for? Uh, perhaps we have someone in our church who can play a significant role on Sundays in teaching, and, and maybe that relieves who we're looking for in a lead pastor from having to do all of that themselves. Maybe we don't need a lead pastor who can teach every week and keep the, the, the value of creative arts in our Sunday services. Maybe we need one who shares the teaching load with a teaching pastor and then does all those other things that I listed. Vision for the organization, leading the staff, helping our ministries be everything that they can be. And so we set out to find the best leader for Crosswinds we possibly could. 
Um, we decided to hire an organization named Slingshot to help us do this. They specifically work with pastors from all over the country, all over the world, and with churches, helping connect them to each other in really recruiting and matching organizations with good people. And by February, they had talked to over 60 people about this lead pastor role here at Crosswinds. Um, actually, over 100 people, but 61 that they had real deep conversations and interviews with about this job. They helped us whittle down that number. Uh, some of those people were not theologically aligned with who Crosswinds is, which is hard to believe because we have a wide variety of theological understandings around this place. Uh, we pride ourselves in our ability to disagree with each other on some of these things, but actually come to think of that, maybe that was what the problem was with some of those candidates. Um, some didn't have the experience. Uh, some were not a cultural fit in, in, in terms of what it is we do here, what we value. Uh, some were just missing some core competencies we felt we needed in this leader. Uh, Slingshot told us it might take 12 to 18 months from the time that I've made a decision, God's calling me on, uh, till when someone can actually be here. That's a long time. But as they described who we were to people and, and, and what it is we were looking for, there was an enormous outpouring of pastors desiring to be a part of a church family like this. Anyway, of those 61, they presented us with five who made it through their first round of interviews, five that they thought that we would want to talk to more. Um, I've mentioned before, one from South Africa, one from Utah, one from Boston, one from Michigan, one from Southern California. And it was then that our executive team here and our elders began our own interviews. Um, I'll tell you, some of those pastors we interviewed more than others. I, I think uh, one of those we interviewed twice and decided it, it wasn't quite the right fit for us. But the other four, we had many interviews with, lots of time to figure out if they would be right for crosswinds. Uh, I counted this up the other day. Uh, our candidate from South Africa probably had 10 interviews with our team from crosswinds, one-on-ones uh, -on as well as group interviews. This poor guy, four in the morning in South Africa on Zoom calls with our team. Uh, same with our person in Boston. Uh, our candidate from Utah, it was closer to 20 interviews. And finally, our candidate from Southern California, I added it up, it was over 30 interviews. And when I say that, I don't just mean like five minute phone calls, I mean at least an hour each time with a person or a group of people diving deep. And I tell you that to say, while you've been exposed to some of these candidates in the pulpit on Sunday, uh, there's a lot that has been going on behind the scenes, a lot more. Uh, this has been an exhaustive process and exhausting, uh, but it's worth it because this church matters to us so much. And we want to make sure we find the right person that God is calling to lead us for the many years that are ahead. And now um, we are thrilled to announce that we have found our new lead pastor, whom you guys have seen twice over the past few months, a guy named Josh Carmen from Southern California. There's, sure. There is so much I could tell you about Josh and you're gonna get to know him over time and I'll explain more about that in a little bit, uh, in a moment. But if I could just share a few things that drew us to him, uh, we believe in his leadership skill. His ability to inspire and guide our team. Uh, he's an engaging communicator. We heard from so many of you who felt his teaching resonated with you personally when he was here with us. He's warm and personable and gifted in pastoral care. He's a great team builder, understands our collaborative style of ministry, and his commitment to building peace among people who disagree with each other, it is a perfect fit for one of the parts of our Crosswinds mission that we so believe. Um, Slingshot told us as a church, you're lucky if you get a 70% match on the things that you're looking for in a candidate on those core areas that you identify ahead of time. Uh, we're happy to tell you, we think we see a 100% match. In fact, if I could add more core areas, yeah, hold your applause for one moment. Uh, uh, if I could add heart for the lost, um, commitment to social justice, I could keep going. I think this would be like a 120% match. 
Uh, Josh is going to bring so much to our church family. And I'll tell you, as much as we've been looking for a pastor like him, I believe that he and his family have been looking for a unique church like this. I'll, I'll, I remember 16 years ago when I was about his age, finding crosswinds and feeling what he feels right now, which is this is a one of a kind place. I am so excited to be a part of it. Uh, Josh is going to be joining our team in transitioning into this lead pastor role, doing most of the things that I listed earlier that we look to lead pastors to do. But what's a little bit unorthodox is what I mentioned earlier. We're inviting him to do it alongside a teaching pastor in Andrea. Um, back when I made my announcement to all of you in January, uh, I think Jody came up and mentioned that Andrea would be staying on the team here at Crosswinds. Uh, this would continue to be our church home. And we said back then uh, that she would be stepping into a, a, a more elevated role here at Crosswinds, but we didn't quite describe it at the time. I want to do that right now. Um, we will have one lead pastor. That is Josh. He'll be leading this church. But as our teaching pastor, our elders have tasked Andrea with leading out what teaching looks like around here on Sunday mornings. Leading out what we teach, uh, the teaching team, which will be Andrea, of course, Josh, and whoever else that Andrea is building into and inviting to come teach here. And, and they've also tasked her with keeping our value of creativity on Sundays, and in fact, bolstering that as we step into the future. Uh, why? We want crosswinds to stay crosswinds. Having someone who's been here 15 years lead out or give direction to, to our Sunday experience, that is really significant for us. And I know that Josh is excited to have Andrea here to do that as, as it allows him to be able to put his energy into other parts of what it is to lead crosswinds. Now, timing. We really believe that it is important to have a fair amount of overlap between Josh and I as we uh, segue into the future. You've already noticed Andrea and I overlapping quite a bit more since January. Uh, Josh will be joining us full-time August 1st, but even now, May, June, July, our intention is to spend a fair amount of time just getting him up to speed on who Crosswinds is and where we are and where we've been going uh, as best he can do that from afar. He and I are going to be talking a couple times a week. He's going to come up and spend some time with our team. Uh, in a few weeks, uh, we're going to have a planning week with our staff. Uh, you've probably heard me before talk about our big idea getaway. Josh is going to join us for that week. And then we're going to have him come up and teach a little bit in June, in July. In fact, uh, we're, we're actually going to have him come up and join our adult ministry leaders for a little bit of a get to know you on a Sunday in May. So uh, keep an eye on an email from us. If you're leading a small group or a frontline team, uh, you're going to be invited to that. That thing is going to be on its way very soon. Um, and then once he's here, Josh and I will begin a long season of a baton handoff leading up to January where we will install him as our official lead pastor and I will step away for a season, a long season, uh, so that you know and he knows this is real and I'm no longer the senior pastor. Uh, I am sure there'll be more information to come as we go, much more. But Crosswinds, I wanted you to know that we have found our person, we found our people, and we could not be more excited. We believe God is in this. We have seen him working in this, in our search, in our prayers, in our discerning. Uh, we asked Josh to send us a short video so you could meet him if you weren't here when he was up here visiting us, and, and so you could meet the rest of his family. Um, would you watch this? Hey, Crosswinds, my name is Josh, if we haven't had a chance to meet. Hi, I'm Angie. And, and I'm Sophia. And we are so excited to be with you guys in the upcoming <laughs> season. We are so stoked uh, to be a part of the Crosswinds family and get to experience mm -hmm. all the things that God is going to do. Mm -hmm. And we look forward to meeting you very soon. Very, very soon. We'll meet you when Judy grows up. Yay, Toto! Bye! Bye! Bye. I, uh, I was down in Southern California this past week, so I got to go to dinner with Josh and his family. And it was exactly like that, pretty much. <laughs> Every 30 seconds, one of the kids doing what they saw, you saw them do in that video. It's so cute, an adorable family. Uh, it was great, you're gonna love them. Um, I wanna thank our staff, and I wanna thank our elders who have given many hours to this process. Uh, you know, not just thank them for their time, but 
even more for their leadership. There is a team behind the scenes at this place who I have been so honored to get to work with. It's maybe the best part of my job. And uh, they keep, sure, you can applaud for them too if you want. Andrea, you're not going to have much time to teach today after these applause breaks. Uh, no. Uh, honestly, that group of people keep this church healthy and they keep it safe. And in moments like this, man, that elder board matters more than ever. And I, I, I just, I want to thank God as well. So would you pray with me? Can we do that together right now? God, I thank you for the way you lead us. It is never a surprise, but it always feels like a surprise. God, when we, we have these moments where uh, we zig and you zag, I, I don't know how else to say it, but you show up and you lead us and you've gone before us, you prepare things before we even get there. And even in an emotional moment like this for me, where I, I feel excitement and grief at the same time, God, I know that you are working to lead us to what you have prepared. So would you begin to create a, a family here for Josh and Angie and their kids. God, would you help them as they come, get surrounded by community and new friends? And God, would you make this place the home that you intend it to be for them as you have for the rest of us? And all God's people said, amen. amen. All right, now with all of that said,